What's up guys, today's the day. We're here at the Boca Resort for the Boca Raton Concourse d'Elegance. If you're not familiar with what a concourse is, it's a car show typically with classics that have been restored and in some cases um, historically modified, period, correct? And what's up man? How's it going? It's not owned by And the cars are judged by how clean they are, how original they are, how well taken care of they are. In some cases, even patina, you know? So the cars are judged based on that and given an award. Uh, so people go to extreme lengths to give their car to show in condition. So in many cases, this is where you can find some of the rarest cars in the world, almost as if they were brand new. Let's get to it. First up, we've got American Performance. And here we've got the classics and muscle cars that we're most familiar with. Buick GSX. Actually, I'm not familiar with the GSX. I didn't know this thing. I didn't know Buick had performance cars, really, until uh, the, the Regal. Look at this thing. So it's got a 360 horsepower, 510 foot. That's a lot of torque. And then over here, you got the GTX. So this is the GSX. This is the Plymouth GTX. And we've got the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. So all of these are essentially the same chassis and the same car just with a few modifications, you know, for each specific brand, which I always thought was kind of interesting, you know, like they make, basically make the same car three different times, but each one's slightly different. I guess people have different tastes, and you know, if you don't like the, the Plymouth version, maybe you can get the, the Oldsmobile version, or the uh, whatever, you know? 70 Plymouth Roadrunner, there you go. Hard top, but it looks like it has this uh, the tonneau cover. Okay. Beautiful interior. Only interesting thing is the, uh, I don't think that's period correct, but whatever, you know, I mean, you gotta get some modern sound in there somehow, right? Mm. Rolls Royce Phantom 5 limousine. Look at this thing. Man, imagine pulling up to your friend's house in this, I man, look at this, wow. Right hand drive. Look at the leg seat. Look at the leg room we've got back here. Interestingly, it's got this small seat right there. That might be for a child. I'm not sure. Huge, huge back seat. Tons of leg room. And it's got suicide doors. So, that's pretty... It's pretty nifty. Uh, check this out. This is a 1937 Cord 812 SC Phaeton. So, it's got a 125 horsepower. And the... Uh, Option supercharger for $415 got you up to 170 horsepower and a 0 to 60 of 13 seconds. Hey, so you can cruise along in this thing. And I think it looks pretty, pretty cool. I mean, it's got this unique grill up front. The headlights pop away. You know, this might be one of the first instances of, you know, pop-up headlights. It's got these tubes here. I don't think the headers are actually housed in there. I think it might be just be for uh, aesthetics. Interior, two bench seats, plenty of space. And it's got it's got this uh, unique styling. I, I really like it, personally. Oh, and it's it's a convertible. Is this a convertible or is this just the tonneau cover? Yeah, you can take the roof off. So there you go. Pop-up headlights and it's convertible. And it's got suicide doors. So it's a coupe with suicide doors. That's pretty unique.
right, so this is a 1935 Bugatti T59 50S. So it's powered by a 4.9 liter double overhead cam, inline eight, which apparently still runs. So we've got the radiator up here with the uh, horseshoe grill that Bugattis are known for. Is that a supercharger? Yeah. Look at this thing. This was actually signed by the uh, grandson of Bugatti. Oh, oh there you right. go. Wow. Yeah, I, I wondered what this that was. Yeah. Inline 8. They don't make inline 8s anymore. And the cylinder spacing is huge. Oh, yeah? To get the cams in, or to get the uh, valves in, you have to remove the pistons, the cam, or the crank. And it's the first thing going in. Is the, uh... Wait, is it a monoblock? Is there no is there no separate cylinder head? No. Wow. Just the, only the, you know, the cam wow, that's here. that's incredible because typically you don't you don't see that until uh, Formula One cars. The machining is really difficult. Yeah, well, that's what uh, El Torre Bugatti was famous for. It was machining and, you know, and beauty. Just looking at the machine on this thing is like. Yeah. And is this a this is a supercharger? Yeah, this is a supercharger down here. There's three uh, Zenith updraft carburetors underneath there. Oh wow! It's uh, gear driven. Gear driven supercharger. Yeah. You don't you don't even see that today. Well, at least you don't have to worry about a belt slipping, so that's nice. <laughs> yeah. And I saw you were you were pumping something. Were you priming so uh, like a fuel uh, pump? Yeah, it's a fuel pump. They use like high gas to help start it. Okay. Very nice. And then uh, we were pumping actually the, the fuel tank. It's a pressurized fuel tank. Okay. And that's what pressure uh, gets the fuel into it. Oh, I see. Yeah, we were, uh, that's we were, like the 14 yeah, package. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nifty. Yeah. There's a 14 what's, what's package. The, what's the top Hello? Speed this is the I think it did uh, 146. Yeah. Or, wow. is it 146 and this or is the steering. This is the. Yeah, that's your steering. This comes all the way up here yeah. to this tie rod and then yeah, it goes to the other wheel. Oh, that's, yeah. that's interesting. And uh, 35 technology. Oh. Yeah, I held, I held a, this is crazy. This engine held the record uh, for land speed or you know engine. So uh, this was a, a speed record engine. 46 in 1938. 146 miles an hour. Yeah. Gosh, I mean 146 in a modern car feels like nothing, but in this thing, <laughs> yeah. that must have been a ride. And that's just the the oil cooler right next to your hands. That's the oil cooler? <laughs> yeah. That's the oil cooler and it's next to your hands. Okay. Right on the steering wheel. Hi. That must not have been fun. That's interesting. And this is for the uh, brakes? Yes. So your brakes is this handle? Um, is, that, is that it? No, that's the shifter the wrong? here. Oh, that's the shifter. This is like the rear brakes and then there's the foot pedal that does all the four. Oh, okay. So this is connected to something on the... So this is for the oh, rear brake. Everything is so mechanical. It's all, yeah. Okay. So this is for the rear brake, and then this goes and to the this front brake. is for all four brakes. So the brakes are on a cable pulley system. Yeah. Wow. And the drums are built into the wheels. So That's fascinating. Part of the rim. Oh, the drum is... The drum is part of the rim. Wow. So doing your brakes basically involves a uh, replacing your wheels as well. <laughs> if you have to. If you have to, yeah. The design is a patent design from uh, Bugatti himself. Oh wow! If you look, look at the gearing around, you'll see that there was there's a gear, so that it wouldn't transfer the heat because it was mountain tires. I bet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With those rotors on the back, like. That. Yeah, because the because uh, if the you know the brake drum is part of the wheel, then yeah, you're just gonna get it hot enough to melt tires. You know, like modern brakes get to like 900 degrees on track. And I see you've got the whole like 30s, oh, the you know, racer or mechanic <laughs> get up mechanic right here. Suit. You know? Yeah, so nice and heavy so you don't yeah. get scraped up. Yeah, there you go, there nice you go. and warm. <laughs> uh, not very fireproof, unfortunately. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's what the fire extinguisher is for. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. All right, Catch you later. appreciate it. Enjoy the show. Have fun. This is a 1962 oh Ferrari 250 GTO Coupe. Wow, I mean. I never thought I'd, I'd see one of these in my lifetime. So this car, these cars were going for auction at 48.4 million, but I know that the, uh, the owner of WeatherTech recently paid 70 million for his. I'm not sure, I think this might be that car actually. Everything in this thing is beautiful. It's got this, this uh, polished gated shifter, this wooden steering wheel, the seats. Everything in this thing is in pristine condition. I mean, look at the door handle. You know, so you push that button, opens the door, and then you 
with one finger open the door and the door is probably incredibly lightweight and, and uh, probably made of aluminum it has a tubular chassis and a three liter v12 engine the entire car weighs less than 2,000 pounds that's less than a Miata that's less than a Lotus Elise heck I think you would need to completely rebody a Lotus Elise in carbon fiber to get less than 2,000 pounds and maybe have like a milk crate for a seat so this one is chassis 3,527 and competed in the uh, let's see the 1962 Tour de France and it was actually leading until it was hit by a milk truck which destroyed the front end and they just took the front end off and still finished Come around this way look at this so it's got quad tip exhaust right here two and two it's got like a I think it's called a cam tail or a cam back where the rear end is just kind of cut off they do that for aerodynamics and even back then, they understood, you know, opening up the area behind the tires to allow high pressure air out massively reduces your drag. Look at that. There's the gas cap. Wow. See if you can get a, a shot of the interior. It's all stanchioned off. This is the only car in the entire show that is uh, sectioned off. And I mean, if the car was $70 million, if I had one, I'd, I'd probably section it off too. If this doesn't win best in show, I mean, I don't know what will. You have your oil pressure gauge right there. No, that's oil temperature in Celsius. That's your oil pressure gauge, I suppose. Let's see, that is your RPMs or speedometer? I think that's your, I think that's your, oh gosh. I think that's your RPMs. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's your red line right there. It's adjustable. Uh, and then right here is your speedometer, which goes in kilometers per hour up to 300. Oh, geez. So it uses a completely tubular chassis, which saves weight and is very, very strong, very safe. And some parts of the chassis actually poke through. So if I zoom in right there, you can actually see part of the roll cage going through the interior, as well as a, uh, a small box for some uh, some tunes. Actually, no, that's a, let's get a charging box for the... <laughs> Oh, I mean, you know, you gotta have some modern convenience, right? There you go. You actually see the roll cage poking through the chassis, so that, well, there's not much for a rear seat. It's more of a parcel shelf. That's where you can put your stuff. So the engine is, the bonnet is held down with these leather straps right here. And it's these two small, clear scoops for directing air into the engine bay. There you go. What an incredible car, very unique. Also got knockoff wheels, and by knockoff I don't mean like they're fake. I mean they're knockoff in that that portion right there. You actually hit it with a hammer, and that's how you uh, remove the wheel. You smack that with a hammer, it loosens up, and uh, you can take it off and change the wheel. And then you put that back on, screw it, and then you smack it with a hammer the other way, and it'll tighten up. So here we got the three-liter V12, six carburetors. I mean balancing two is is difficult enough. Can you imagine balancing six? Jeez, absolutely incredible. All right, so here's a couple of cars I never thought I would see at this show, simply because the whole point of the show had been, you know, everything is going to be 1974 and back. But I suppose maybe someone at the Boca Concourse actually read, watched one of my videos and then said, hey, let's feature some newer cars. So here we have a 1978 Ferrari 308 GTS Euro spec, which looks so much better than the American version. Look at this. Very cool. And then over here, here's something I definitely thought I'd never see. This is a 1995 R33 Skyline GTR. Is it a GTR? I think so. Yeah. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with this one, you know. Uh, 2.6 liter inline six, twin turbo. This is beautiful. Is it? No, it's a GTST. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of times they look really, really similar. You know, you, you might see, you know, um, People take GTSTs or GTTs and uh, put R33 or R32, uh, you know, GTR parts on it. You know, depending on the car. But this is uh, something unique. This is uh, rear-wheel drive, not all-wheel drive, to my knowledge. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think the GTTs and GTSTs are rear-wheel drive. It was just the GTR that was all-wheel drive. But this thing is beautiful, very well maintained, very well kept, and. Uh, happy to see it here you know so hopefully we can see 
uh, some more concourse quality cars here at the concourse that are uh, a bit newer. Oh, look at this thing, 1974 Alfa Romeo Montreal two-door coupe. Stewart would love this thing. It's got these doors that swoop all the way up and create the frame. Take a look at the interior. Absolutely flawless. Five-speed shifter with a dog leg transmission. Look at that. Wooden steering wheel. Man. Alphas are beautiful no matter what. There we go. The rear window is the hatch. Keeps it simple. Where's this car? Where where's it kept? There you go. Not much trunk space, but yeah, it's it's adequate. You probably do put your luggage in there, some uh, some groceries. Go, there you go. The downturn exhaust, classic plates, yeah, cool stuff. I like these vents here. These are interesting. Are they? Do they go to something? Uh, no, I think those are just for style. You know, that's it's very 70s right there. All right, check it out. So here we have a GT40 and a Ferrari P3, and these are the cars that faced off in Ford versus Ferrari in the 1966 Le Mans. Now these aren't the actual cars because those are priceless artifacts kept in museums. These are actually kit cars, but you know what? They're close enough. They get the, they're close enough for us to get the idea. You know, so we've got this beautiful styling all the way through here. Uh, this 40 inches tall. Like this is, look at this. So that comes up to my waist. I am, yeah, my waistline is taller than the car. Look at this thing. Actually, I think it's like 42 or 43 inches tall. There you go. The exhaust pokes there, pokes through there. Uh, we got the carburetors in back. The the uh, big V8 engine. I might ask them to pop the rear bonnet for me so I can, you know, open up the rear clamshell and check it out. But yeah, we got the uh, knockoff wheels. Look at this. Yeah. Uh, radiator here with the with the outlets. Really nice stuff. So let's take a look at the Ferrari. And this thing is just beautiful. It's got the swooping arches. These, everything's so curvy and beautiful. The, here we've got a much larger opening than the Ferrari for the uh, for cooling, relieving air that's coming through the uh, front of the car. This one's green. I'm not sure what color the originals might have been. I, I would imagine red, but I guess it could be wrong. Uh, Right-hand drive. And then the passenger side is just electronics and stuff. This is really cool. Gated shifter, of course. Let's see if we can zoom in on the shifter, get you guys a shot of that. Yeah. This is probably a fairly faithful replica of the original. You know, save for a couple things, you know, modern plastics and so so on and so forth. Look at this. Dry sump. We got the uh, oil catch can right there. Real nice, real nice. Too bad it's not using my fittings, that would be nice. <laughs> But here we got the oil cooler. Looks like a like a 30 row oil cooler, like a 25 row oil cooler. There we go. Transaxle back here. Nifty. Good. Cool stuff. So here we got the. That's actually the intake. So that comes up here. Boom. And you have the carburetors. One, two, three, four, five, six for this V12. There's two oil filters. You know, because one is just isn't enough. Now you gotta have two. Hmm. What else? What else we have uh, going on here? We got the distributor. It's the spark ignition, and we have this here for um, opening up the throttle bodies. You know? All right, we are so really, really happy cool. still about this beautiful weather and this incredible right. day. We're all what else we have here? We have the. Oh, okay. This is the header. So the entire exhaust. I guess this this goes to three cylinders. That goes to three cylinders. So it's four separate exhaust systems, and they kind of converge here. And they don't actually share the piping. They're actually just independent. So. Let's see. Nifty. It's really, really cool. There we go. The more meaningful it is. Awesome. Well, thank you to the owner for bringing this out. This is actually here at the Haggerty display, so yeah, nifty stuff. Check it out. It's Wayne Carini chasing classic cars. Yeah, that guy. Look at that. Look at that mustache. All right, guys, well, the Boca Concourse has been absolutely incredible. Huge show. I, oh, the 250 GTO, I just, I never thought that I would ever see one of these cars in person ever in my life. And, you know, here it was at the show. So right now I'm on the way to DRT, Das Rentreffen, in Sunset Place in Miami. It's about an hour away, so I wanted to attend both events. Both are absolutely ridiculously beautiful events. Here we've got the Boca Concourse, 
down in Miami, we've got Das Rentreffen Porsche Car Show. So some of the rarest Porsches you'll ever see are right there. So I'm heading over right now. I'm leaving a little early. Normally I would stay until the end, but I want to attend both events because so, both of those are so good. So heading out right now, heading into my car. Thank you guys for watching, and let's jump over there.